All right. Figure how to desolder this. First thing you want to do though is check to make sure um, everything. Make sure or check to see what's what's wrong with it or what's shorted. <clears throat> so you want to do like a middle pin to an outer pin on each one. It's usually only going to be one side. Yep. So you got this side here. It's just middle pin to outer pin. These two pins are always going to be shorter, the two outer, because of the transformer you got right here. So you can't really measure that while it's in the board. But outer to, or inner to any outer, and that's pretty much a guarantee right there. Okay, so... I need to change tips on my iron here, real quick. I'm not going to bother editing this video, so... Okay, there's that. Alright, so, now that you know it's this side, the first thing you want to do, which is going to make this about 10 times easier than it would be, is you want to remove the screws and re and push the IGBTs off the heat sink because that's what's going to be, all well, your heat's going to be going into the heat sink and it's going to be a lot harder. So, this is what I do. You're going to need a, a desoldering pump and a possibly some wick. Don't always need the wick, but sometimes I actually have to use it. Okay, so back to this. Take that off. Take the screw out and take these two out. So I need the rest of this by hand. Alright, so now what you want to do is pull them away from the heat sink like this. Flip it back over and grab your pump. You're not going to bother with the middle pin. That's the tough one. The emitter is kind of hard too and the, the gate is usually pretty easy but it's a lot easier if you just do it. Okay, so you do this pin like this is the easy pin. Do them both here. And now the emitter is going to take a little bit more heat because it's got that copper on it. Make sure you hold it there for a few seconds. There you go. It's like a clean, clean one there. Okay, so. There's that. <clears throat> now what you can do is grab the IGBT, hold it like this, and then heat up the middle pin. And it should pop right out. Like that. I'm going to do the other one. Like that. Now, I'm going to go Use a pump and just clean out that center pin. Just give it a good heat and then. Okay. There's that. I just want to make sure there's not a lot of mess on there. Looks pretty good. One more thing, let's make sure. Yeah, see those are bad still. So now what I usually do is, you want to check these diodes, because I've noticed that every once in a while, they fail too. You gotta put this on diode mode, not ohm. And just check to make sure you got, ooh, that one's bad actually. About 0 0.3, 0 0.4, anywhere from point three to point seven 
on these. This one's probably bad right here. Yeah, see we got two bad diodes. <clears throat> if you only replace the IGBTs and you got two bad diodes, um, as soon as you turn it on again, these are going to die. Or something's going to die. The fuse is going to blow again. And now, the way I do the diodes is when I put them in, the leads are bent over, so they're kind of a bitch to desolder. So what I usually do is I just cut them off here like this. And then what I do is I flip them over and I grab a pair of tweezers like this. And these are cheap ones from eBay. Ideally you want non-magnetic ones for soldering, but they come in handy for mine are a little bit magnetic, which is kind of annoying, but for this purpose it doesn't matter. And then I just pull out the heat this up and then I pull out the um, the piece of the lead that's still in there. Do it on um, the other one. This is really important actually and I don't know why these have been failing lately. I haven't these diodes usually never fail. I actually some ordered some bigger ones for the future because I'm out of these right now so I won't be replacing them right now. So then just use your uh, pump on it. This pump works really good and they're pretty cheap. If Sometimes if you um, go to desolder something and it doesn't come out right, that's when you use the, the wick or to clean it up a little bit. A lot of times you'll have to re-solder the Resolder it and then repump it uh, to get a clean. The key right really is to get it, the heat on there and have it long enough so that the heat penetrates all the way through to the other side of the hole. If you get a partial heat and then go to pump it, you get partial solder remover and it doesn't work. There's a couple other things you can check too, and it doesn't hurt. I haven't. I started uh, not putting this diode on here. Um, it's just a protection to make sure that this cap doesn't get charged over 400 volts. I mean, the cap's only rated to 180, so. But I'm not worried about the cap. I'm worried about the IGBTs, and they got their own protection. So, but we can check um, these diodes as well. They pretty much never ever fail. But it doesn't hurt to check them. That one's good. We got a 0.8 volts on them. That's good. That's good. Touch these up <clears throat> just to make sure they're all on there. Middle one. You could also put this on continuity again and check the cap. Should be a short for a little bit of time. And then it discharges, and then you get your open. That's how it should work like that. So that looks good and um, I'm going to uh, replace these right now so you can see how the best way to do that is. That means I need to go get First thing you got to do is wipe this old stuff off because once you remove them there could be stuff falling in it and I don't trust this stuff, the old crap. You want a fresh seal or fresh, uh, fresh paste on there. 
definitely have to add more to you can't just get away with the with their these heat sinks aren't perfectly even if you look at them really close there so this compound is a must <clears throat> even without that it's a it's a must so I usually just use a q-tip but it's kind of irrelevant so this stuff likes to separate. There's always some really good mixed amount on the edge. Oh, I forgot to get the IGBTs out. ton of it. This one doesn't look. Right. Don't need a whole lot, like I said, just I'm gonna spread it around in a minute and remove all the excess. I think a little bit thicker is a little is better than a little thin as long as you press them tightly against the the heat sink because then you'll remove all the extra. So easiest way to put this in. This side is really easy to get in. The other side is a little diff a little more difficult, but what you do is you just stick it in the holes like this and let it sit there like that. And then put your screw in. And then at the same time kind of lift this up and push it in like that. See, I usually do this with standoffs on the board. It's a little easier because the leads hang down so low. But we can use this. And what I usually do is I use my, my tweezers here to hold the nut for a sec. We just twist this here. You know, for some reason, these hex screws I have are really stubborn sometimes. I don't know what the fuck. Fuse holder is kind of in the way. I'm gonna use this thing, but I can't find my other. Uh, my other hex or right, Allen wrench. It's the ones that are just loose. I usually push the with my thumb really hard against the heat sink because the screw pushes the top of the IGBT, not the not the bottom. And the bottom is actually more important because that's where the die is inside the IGBT. And that's the part that needs to stay cool. So now we'll do the other one.
Okay, I'm gonna try and get this soldered before my bat battery in the camera dies again. So that's it, just tighten up those screws. Now, another thing I need to mention is when you put the IGBT in, make sure you bend the leads this way because this board is designed for some smaller heat sinks and they're a little bit different as far as the part is back a little bit further. So the leads kind of need to go this way a bit so that the, the part can set against the heat sink better. <clears throat> I have new boards that look just like these. In fact, they're right here. That, um, that don't that are that are modified. I don't even know if you can see a difference. The difference is here. This part is pushed back like fifty thousandths of an inch. Just, so anyway, just gonna put these off, and then we're done until I get the diodes. Now, if I ohm them out. Should be good. There you go.